Welcome to uh, the international press briefing regarding outbreaks and mutations of uh, Danish mink farms, on Danish mink farms. As announced yesterday, a unique mutation of COVID has been found on mink farms in uh, human, uh, human beings living primarily in the area around the affected farms. The Danish uh, government regards this as a very concerning development and we are treating it with the utmost seriousness. We are taking all necessary and appropriate actions, including the culling of all remaining mink in Denmark. Let me also clarify that outbreaks among mink is not a new phenomenon, as we have seen it in several countries. Since June 2020, COVID-19 has been seen in mink. As the virus transmission between mink and humans, as of yesterday, 216 mink farms are infected. We have indications that this unique mutation have a reduced response to antibodies, which can ultimately affect the efficiency of uh, potential vaccines. Currently, further tests on this matter are being concluded and conducted. Denmark has informed the ECDC, the World Health Organization, and the European Commission of the findings, and will provide full transparency. We are taking resolute measures to address the outbreak of the mutated virus. All remaining mink will now be culled, including non-infected and otherwise healthy mink. We have begun uh, intensified efforts to conclude this operation as swiftly as possible. New wide ranging uh, restrictions will be implemented for the population in the seven affected municipalities. This includes, but not restricted to, the COVID-19 testing capacity in the affected regions will be reinforced and all inhabitants are encouraged to undergo testing. Movements between the municipalities will strongly be strongly uh, discouraged unless it is required for essential purposes, critical functions. All public and private workplaces are strongly encouraged to restrict the physical presence at the workplace to essential functions only. Restaurants, bars, cafes will be closed with the exception of takeaway. All indoor and outdoor cultural institutions and venues used for various sports will be closed for public access. All inhabitants are encouraged to minimize social contacts. The current public ban on gathering of more than 10 people will be expanded to areas currently exempted. These are just few of the steps we are taking. I cannot underline enough how seriously the Danish government takes this situation. The Danish government has, for the moment, uh, the global pandemic reached Denmark, chosen to act fast, decisively, and with clear commitment that we would rather go a step too far than take a step too little to combat COVID-19. This is also the reason why we have chosen to take extensive and comprehensive measures in the current situation. Curling of 17 million mink, effectively shutting down the entire industry for now in Denmark. Extensive local restrictions in the affected areas, large-scale testing of the population in the affected areas. This is not a decision that has been taken lightly, but it is a necessary precaution. We are fully committed to ensure that the current situation is dealt with swiftly, effectively, and decisively. I will now uh, give the floor uh, to uh, my colleagues here at the table. First, I will start with uh, Søren Rostrøm from the Danish Health Authority. Søren, the floor is yours. Thank you, Minister. Uh, the mink industry is uh, proportionally very large in our small country. Uh, we have been very concerned with the rapidly evolving uh, spread of COVID-19 among minks in Denmark and also the rapidly evolving uh, transmission uh, of uh, COVID-19 virus from humans to mink and from minks to humans. And uh, this has been rapidly evolving uh, and the new mutations that have been found is certainly just adding to that concern. Therefore, uh, the very huge decision by our government of uh, calling all the live mink in Denmark and effectively uh, putting the a halt to mink industry is of course not a decision taken lightly. But in our view as a healthcare authority, it is a timely and necessary uh, measure 
for us to retain control of our epidemic in Denmark, locally in the areas hit worst in our country by mink to human transmission of virus, but also nationally for retaining our control of the epidemic. But you should also see this a measure as our contribution to retaining global control of the pandemic. Just briefly to explain how we have controlled and retained control of the epidemic in our country. We were hit uh, by COVID-19 in the last week of February, the first February, uh, week of March, and it rapidly evolved as in many countries across Europe. And many measures were taken in our country in the second and third week of March, and we quickly saw effect and already by the 1st of April, our first wave had uh, mitigated. And from around the beginning of May, uh, and for the next couple of months over the summer, we had a low level of community transmission in this country. Around the uh, beginning of September, we saw a re-emergence of COVID-19 transmission in our country. And this has increased also as we moved into the colder months in our uh, society as well as reopening of society, which we were one of the first countries already around the middle of April to reopen schools and kindergartens, etc. And we have managed to keep a very open society and are still doing it. And we are currently retaining control of our epidemic in this country with a reproductive numbers just slightly above one. And uh, generally with the measures that are constantly being adjusted, uh, Currently, we are at a maximum of, of 10 uh, for public gatherings, uh, bars and restaurants, etc., closing at 10 p.m. And uh, we have also uh, gradually increased uh, uh, the measures of using face masks, etc. That has proven to be effective. We have found in this country an effective balance between keeping an open society while also at the same time retaining control of the epidemic. We currently have two challenges. One challenge is certainly a large uh, reservoir of virus in mink and the uh, mink to human transmission. And we also have a second challenge uh, in, in a number of areas of our countries where we are seeing rapidly evolving transmission, including in some western parts of Copenhagen with a large immigrant population. But we've also proven uh, in this country that we have a very large testing capacity. We have a very good a monitoring system, we are able to work very closely among national and local authorities to in implement measures that will make us uh, able to uh, retain control of our epidemic. And I'm very optimistic that we can do this also looking forward, also taking into account the uh, new situation with the mink. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, to Søren from Danish Health Authority. Now I would pass the floor to Tyra Grove Krause from the State Serum Institute, please. Thank you. As Søren mentioned, in Denmark, we have a very high testing rate, I think one of the highest in, in Europe. And we also do a lot of whole genomic sequencing as part of our surveillance program. We do whole genomic se sequencing of uh, around 14% of all the positive uh, samples in Denmark. Since we have seen the outbreaks of uh, coronavirus in mink farms, we have also seen uh, transmission to people working in mink, mink farms and also transmission uh, to the community. In, from June and until now, we have identified five different variants with mink-specific mink uh, changes uh, in the viruses. And uh, one of these variants that we call cluster five have four different changes in the spike protein of the virus. The spike protein, protein is quite important because this is the, pro the protein that is used for entering the cells. And uh, many of the vaccines that are currently under development are directed towards the spike protein. Uh, this week, uh, we got the lab results uh, from some experiments where this vir virus has been grown in cells, and we have added antibodies from patients that have previously recovered from a COVID-19 infection. And what we could see was that this variant showed less sensitivity to these neutralizing antibodies from recovered patients. 
Uh, this is a concern because this may, um, uh, this may me mean that in the future that uh, some of the COVID-19 spike directed vaccine may be less effective against these variants of the virus. This is not certain. We still need to do ongoing uh, tests and uh, scientific uh, research, but it's a, a concern. Uh, we uh, got this result this Monday and uh, Tuesday we made a new risk assessment uh, together with the National Health Authority where we assessed that there was a, a considerable public health risk uh, associated with having uh, mink breeding ongoing during a pandemic and there was also a risk that uh, potential risk that uh, these changes that we have seen may affect the effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines against these new, uh, this new variant. Uh, on the third, we sent this uh, new risk assessment to the National uh, Health Authority, uh, National, uh, the Ministry of Health. And on the fourth, we shared the information with uh, the early warning response system uh, uh, underneath the European Commission, and we also shared the information with WHO as part of the, our obligations within the international, international health regulations. Uh, yesterday, we had a telephone conference with ECDC and WHO where we shared all the results, and uh, today we have also shared the whole sequence uh, in these uh, warning networks, and we have also updated all the different sequences of these viruses in the national genomic uh, database called GIS8. So, yeah, that was a status from uh, our institute. Thank you so much, uh, Tura. Uh, and now I will give the floor to Niklas Hobe, Head of Crisis Management, Danish uh, Veterinary and Food Administration, please. Good. Thank you, Minister. Uh, it is a, not a pleasant task we face. We have, uh, as you heard, uh, almost 17 million minks in Denmark. At the moment, uh, we have been curling mink from the start of October. Uh, doing this, we ensure that the curling is done under the best animal welfare uh, conditions that we can manage. Uh, because it is such a huge task, we are uh, cooperating together with the uh, National Police, with the Danish Emergency Management Agency, with Defense, with um, Environment and Nature uh, agencies, uh, along with colleagues from other uh, ministry uh, authorities. Um, the overall uh, task is coordinated by the National Operative uh, Crisis Management Staff, and that is where I am going just after this meeting. Um, the risk assessment that was changed earlier this week meant that the uh, risk management that we do uh, regarding uh, mink has changed significantly. Uh, we have uh, a huge task that is uh, going to that we try to finish within uh, only a few weeks. Um, the curling of uh, mink is done uh, in three ways. Uh, minks are normally, uh, their, their fur is taken off at this, uh, these, these uh, weeks we are in now. This uh, is also one of the things that is going on at the moment. Uh, on top of that, uh, some of the mink farmers are also curling mink uh, on behalf of uh, the government. And then the government ourselves, we are uh, curling milk at several uh, mink farms at the moment. Uh, we have been curling minks uh, for several weeks. At the moment, we have uh, around 216 uh, mink farms that have been contaminated with COVID-19. We have a... Uh, strategy to curl mink within a zone of uh, 7.8 kilometers from a contaminated mink farm. This equals around 300 mink farms in Denmark. Uh, in total, we have uh, 
almost uh, curled 200 of these uh, mink farms either contaminated with COVID-19 or in a zone around a contaminated uh, mink farm. Uh, it's still a huge task to uh, do. Uh, it's not pleasant. Uh, we do it on a, in a manner that is uh, with animal welfare in mind. Uh, and we uh, are trying to have this done within uh, a very short time. Um, so that was it. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. So now what I would do is open up for uh, questions. Uh, now we'll uh, answer the questions of the general uh, political aspects of the situation, the current situation, and the general approach of the Danish uh, government uh, to the current situation. Uh, and our three experts uh, will then be able to um, answer the more technical and, and health-related uh, questions and issues. So uh, now I open up the floor. And please identify yourself. Uh, and, and the question is in English, please. Nadia Kronborg, Danish Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, World Health Organization says that they don't have any evidence that this mutated uh, version will affect the vaccine. So are we overreacting by shutting down an entire part of Denmark? I will pass the, the question to the, uh, I think uh, it will be Tura uh, that will answer, please. So we definitely need to do more studies uh, on this uh, specific variant and its effect or possible effect on future vaccines, but it takes a long time to do these kind of studies. So in order to, to, to act in time, we felt that it was important to share this information already now and react on the uh, information, even though we don't have complete evidence at this time. And I can add that, um, as Tura also said, we received uh, Tuesday the risk, the updated risk assessment from SSI, uh, where it stated that it uh, was a considerable public health risk uh, issue, and that's what we are acting on. Um, any more comments? No. Then we take the second question, please. Yes, and we were told that uh, we haven't found any people with this uh, cluster 5 uh, version since September. So um, is it necessary to ask people to stay at home, close schools, uh, public transport, if we at this point have no one infected with this cluster 5 virus? That is for Søren Bostrom, Danish Health Authority, please. Uh, this uh, risk assessment regarding the mutations is adding on top of a, a, a strong concern regarding, uh, as I told in my introduction, uh, regarding uh, the large reservoir of COVID-19 uh, infection in the mink industry and the risk from, from having a mink to human transmission. The virus mutations is adding to that concern, but that concern was already huge. We have a very large community transmission among people in the seven local communities where we introduced a number of new restrictions. That is very concerning. What is one part of, of, of the restrictions and measures that we have introduced is also a, an, an extremely ambitious testing strategy where we're basically asking the population of these seven uh, local communities to be tested within the ne next couple of weeks. We're doing this uh, with an abundance of caution. We will get more knowledge about the, the uh, extent of human uh, transmission in those communities, the extent of mink-related virus in the human uh, population, and also we will sequence all the positive results and we'll get to know in the next couple of weeks much more about uh, the extent of eventual uh, mutated virus. And in a couple of weeks we'll know more and then we can adjust the measures as we see uh, appropriate. Thank you. Next question. <clears throat> yes, please. Um, Mon Butler, Bloomberg News. Um, we would like to know a little bit more about the numbers coming out today from uh, the SSI regarding uh, the, the various mink uh, mutations. As I understand it, five different, as you pointed out, five different mutations, more than 200 people have some version, one of these variations. How likely is it that that number is going to just keep increasing over the next few weeks, as, as was mentioned before, 
And um, how, do you, how do you see this development? Yes, I forgot to, to give you the numbers, but it's correct. We have identified uh, 214 uh, uh, patients with this, these specific uh, mink variants and 12 people with this especially concerning mink variant cluster, cluster 5. Uh, we don't know uh, how many has uh, cluster 5 at this time, but we'll find out when we start to sequence uh, all the positive samples from the northern uh, uh, region of Jutland, because mo the far majority is from that area. Uh, what I think is we will see an increase in the coming weeks, and maybe also outside uh, region Jutland, uh, in, in, in the middle part of uh, Jutland, because we also have seen infected farms in these areas. So we may likely see more uh, transmission of these viruses also in other uh, areas. But there's no doubt at this time we have uh, the main problem is in the northern part of Jutland. And a follow-up question, perhaps either to the minister or to the SSI. Uh, yesterday, uh, the head of the SSI said that WHO had voiced, uh, I think he said they were worried about the situation and monitoring the situation closely. Uh, today, we know that the WHO says they're not really that concerned at the moment, as my colleague said before, also saying that we're, we're far away from making any kind of assessment on this yet. Much more studies, uh, much more studies are, are needed. What is the um, sort of the the thoughts about potentially creating some kind of global panic on this issue if it's, it turns out to be completely unnecessary? Well, Atua can answer the technical that's part. All, yeah. Yeah, that's always a, a, a balance of, um, of, uh, of risk. And uh, in, in this case, I think it's better. Instead of waiting, you really need, when you have with the epidemic, works with the epidemics, you need to act in time. And uh, instead of waiting until you get all the evidence, then it might be too late. So you need to act in time. And, uh, and now when we got this concern, you need to start to stop uh, transmission. And, uh, and so I think it's, uh, you, you need to react quickly and not just wait for evidence. But of course, uh, side, uh, on the side, we also have to do all these uh, additional studies to find out whether uh, this is a, 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 a real concern. And we, as I said in, in my introduction, we uh, are in full transparency. We are working and, 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 of course, provided the information to the World Health Organization, to ECDC, to the European Commission, and, and thereby um, um, giving all the data we can and, and exploring the issue in, in depth. It's very important. But this government will, uh, on a recommendation of health authorities uh, and uh, research, we will act in time uh, to ensure uh, that we will take the accurate uh, uh, actions against the COVID spreading and also this particular uh, mutation, which is a, a great concern, and therefore we are reacting uh, precautionary to be sure that that um, it will not uh, spread too much. And if I might add just one comment on, on uh, vaccine effic efficacy, which is also certainly being raised here. We are acting, as, as uh, the minister said, uh, with an abundance of caution in a timely fashion because we have this concern. Uh, about uh, what it could uh, mean for immunity. But it's also very important to say that the vaccines being developed now in large scale uh, randomized controlled trials, very well documented, that we expect to have very soon documented, approved, and, and able for use. They will certainly be effective. They will be documented effective. We will, of course, share our knowledge. We will do extreme large testing to prove uh, or disprove how large a problem this is in our population. But it should not mean that people suddenly start saying the vaccines will not work. When they come, they will be very well documented. We will look at the documentation. We will not be using vaccines unless they are documented to a very high level of proof that the European uh, medical authorities will accept as proof of efficacy. Just a, a, a tiny little uh, follow-up just uh, about the, the culling of the mink. It was mentioned that it would be fairly soon. Uh, can you maybe elaborate a little bit on whether we're talking days, weeks, month? Um, <clears throat> thank you for the good question. Uh, yeah, um, We are talking right now about having uh, the entire population of mink uh, in Denmark curled within only a few weeks. A few weeks. Thank you. Okay. Yes, please. Next. 
Okay, two uh, questions. Uh, the first question will Crown Daily TV2. The first question is uh, to Søren Brostrom and to you as well, uh, to your, I would like to ask if you have any kind of concern about an over death toll among these new newly found uh, variations of uh, the coronavirus. And the second uh, question is for you, Minister, and that's a question about what kind of reaction you get in the foreign minister from uh, our export markets. Uh, this is a five uh, billion Danish krona business uh, in 2019, but some of the export market might be concerned and think, well, how about pigs, how about everything else that we export uh, from, from animals. Could you give us a, an overview about what's uh, coming in in the Minister uh, uh, at this point? Thank you. Well, if I can start and then uh, leave the floor to Tura and so on after. Uh, first of all, what we've done, uh, we've done, as uh, we said, uh, swiftly in this week when we got a new uh, risk assessment in the government, we have shared all the information uh, with uh, World Health Organization, ECDC, European Commission, others, and the ministry, uh, we have instructed all of our embassies around the world uh, to provide information uh, to, to uh, the countries there. And I've personally also talked to um, several foreign ministers and informed them about the actions we are taking in Denmark. We are taking this situation very seriously. Uh, we are, um, and we always want to be uh, before the curve when it comes to the combating COVID-19 and also the specific risk of a mutated uh, virus and, and uh, the implication that mutated virus creates for us. So we, we, are, uh, we are reaching out uh, and we will of course protect uh, and ensure that the good reputation of Denmark, very high standards for health and, and, and also uh, animal uh, security uh, is, is there in, in Denmark and that's also why we act so swiftly. But I think first uh, Tura and then so on after. If uh, you, you asked about the seriousness of this variant compared to, to the normal variants, we have no data to, to indicate that they, it should be more serious or more transmissible uh, than the normal viruses. So there's no reason to be concerned in northern Jutland with regards to these uh, variants. There's no increased uh, individual risk uh, associated with infection with these. I think that was uh, all for now. Thank you so much uh, for coming, and thank you. Okay.